Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com, your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing details. Although the WWTC family dates back to the early 2000s, this Gerard Perigo Traveler WWTC World Time Chronograph was launched in 2013 in grade five titanium. This watch is about one millimeter larger than the previous version at 44 millimeters in diameter. It's 13.9 millimeters thick and 53.5 millimeters from lug to lug with a 22 millimeter spacing between the lugs. Throw it on my wrist of 16 centimeters circumference. And you can see that it's not just the size of the case that was changed, it's also the design. These stepped out lugs are sharply downturned, so it wraps around the wrist almost like a tonneau case. Now my wrist is 16 centimeters, and I believe given the size of the watch, your wrist should be at least this large to wear the timepiece. Any smaller, there are gonna be some lug overlap issues. You can see how it pushes out to the edge of my wrist. You don't want the lugs overarching beyond your wrist. However, it is surprisingly thin, not, not as thick as I expected, and with a sloped case flank, It'll easily fit underneath most sleeves. Now in titanium and sapphire, it is very light. So while it's large, it's not heavy. The strap is a substantial piece. As you can see, it conforms to the arc of the case. It's an integrated strap. So there's no daylight between the two. Medium brown calfskin leather. You can see it's thickly bolstered to give it volume. So it better holds up visually against the lugs themselves. We have a monotone stitch, a folded edge, and then on the underside, you can see that it's a fusion of rubber and leather with the rubber helping to prevent the heat, sweat, oil, moisture, and grit of the wrist from wearing down the leather itself. So there's a buffer between your wrist and the leather. You can see there's a little bit of a geometric form underneath that little GP logo, a reference to the company's Golden Bridge and Bridge Series watches. We have a media blasted titanium deployant clasp here. It's a twin trigger piece, so it can't pop open accidentally. You must press both triggers. And then inside, you can see, much like Omega, which uses a similar clasp, you tuck the strap in underneath and the excess length just hides underneath the clasp. As a result, there's no need for minder loops and there's no excess length flapping in the breeze. That's not an issue with this watch. It's a very clean and secure clasp design. There are some changes compared to the previous case. Uh, the biggest ones are these stepped out lugs, which have a little bit of an air of longa about them, but you can see that the finish of the case is understated. Principally satin finished, you can see that it's actually a vertical satin finish, a bit uncommon. There's a circular concentric pattern across the tops of the lug hoods. You could see that we have a similar kind of pattern on the bezel, but on the flanks of the case, the brushing is vertical. You can also see that there are some small polished highlights on the edge of the lugs. You see that polished bevel? That's how you know this is grade five titanium, not grade two. Grade two is almost impossible to polish. Grade five is good because it's as light as grade two, and it's also hypoallergenic, but it's also more scratch resistant than steel. We have a crown, which here is a screw down crown. And oh, by the way, this watch has the meatiest click feel I've ever experienced. As you wind this watch, you really feel it. I should also mention that the timepiece features a number of subsidiary modes like hacking or stop seconds. And there's a quick set for the date. Another important thing to note, unlike most of the previous WWTC World Time Chronographs, this one is 100 meters water resistant, so a true sports watch. Just put it on a rubber strap or textile strap and you will be good to go. Now the timepiece is part of the Worldwide Time Control Series. So you have this geosphere globe-like or projection-like pattern across the center, a silver grid, and then you can see the convergence at the poles. We have applique hour indices. You can see that the hands are a sort of fusion of Dauphine and Alpha. Let's take a quick look at this watch in the dark because it is loomed. It is a sports watch after all. The watch includes a chronograph and a world time function. And what we'll do is we'll just explore how this works. On the previous version of the watch, there would have been an extra crown over at nine o'clock to adjust the world time reference ring. Here you see, I'm able to adjust the world time reference ring. And the way this works is I put my city of reference up at 12 o'clock. So in this case, it would be Riyadh. And then I make my adjustments to the time. You can see right here, it would be 5 a.m. in Riyadh. 
And I know that because I look at the city. We have 24 cities for 24 principal time zones in the world. You just look at the city at 12 o'clock, that's your current city, and then you look at the hour next to the city. So I can see it's 5 a.m. in Riyadh because this is in a 24-hour format, and the blue part, the blue semicircle is generally where it's night, and the silver is generally where it's day. So I can see that in Hawaii, it's 1600. I can see that we're close to midnight in Rio de Janeiro, and you can see that in the Azores, it is 1 a.m. It works just like that. You can see time in Chicago. You can see that it's 9 a.m. in Bangkok, 8 a.m. in Dhaka. This is how the watch works. Now, of course, it also includes a chronograph, which is a modular complication. It's built on a Gerard Perigo 3300 base. It's a vertical clutch chronograph, so there's no play in the operation of the second hand. As you start it up, it jumps into action without any stagger or hobble. Of course, if I want to set the watch, you can see, demonstrate that right here. I can set the world time reference ring, then I pull it out and I can set the local time and the 24 hour ring. Note that as the local time advances clockwise, the reference time, the globe time, advances counterclockwise. Let's turn it all over. We have a high horology movement, often considered to be a rival to the Zenith Elite and the JLC 899 series. The GP3300s are unidirectional automatic winders that are thin, fine, potentially very good timekeepers when regulated by an expert and beautifully made. With unidirectional winding, it has a 46 hour power reserve. It pivots on a mammoth 63 joules, beats weigh at eight beats per second. It has hacking, it has quick set, it has the vertical clutch chronograph via module, it has the world time via module, and all of this once again water resistant down to 100 meters. Reach out to Team Also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.